Masa, I remember there was a time when families would flock to Makasa, a village on the Western Cape's False Bay coast. Attracted by its famous pavilion and pristine beach, they'd enjoy leisurely afternoons swimming and fishing. Well, sadly, Claire, those days are gone. Despite being surrounded by some of Cape Town's most sought-after suburbs, Makasa is a shadow of its former self, more like a criminal haven. In a story that contains adult themes not suitable for children, Evan travels to Makasa and finds a community haunted by the night. Makasa Beach, for decades a popular fishing spot on the False Bay coastline, once a safe and peaceful place. But for years now, the fabric of Makasa in the Western Cape has been slowly but steadily unraveling. Saturday, May the 27th, marked the start of a week that Felicity Solomons will never forget. The body of a woman who had been raped and murdered, callously dumped on Makassar Beach. The people that first catch it was the fishermen, and they were first on scene. So yeah, just a dumping site. Felicity was born and raised in Makassar. In recent years, she says it's become the target of criminals from outside the area. Since I grew up, things have changed tremendously and you have to be afraid for the kids. On their way to school, things happen like kidnapping and stuff like that. Felicity tries to keep the children in her area safe and escorts them to and from school. It's a far cry from the memories of her youth when she spent long afternoons at Makassar Beach Pavilion. Yo, that was a lick of days. Everyone in the street walk together, then we go to the beach with your two-piece on and enjoy the whole view that's there for you because the pavilion was something, it's something beautiful. But now it's a sad, sad, sad story. That is where it all ends because there's nothing left, nothing at all. It's hard to imagine now, but this was once a bustling seaside resort popular with locals. All that remains today are these last pieces of rubble of the Makassar Beach Pavilion, which was built in 1991. In 2004, the city of Cape Town abandoned the water park due to vandalism and maintenance costs. It was soon buried by shifting sands. Some blame its location near the sea. In 2020, the remaining structure was demolished in just seven days, leaving little trace. For Etienne Williams, Makassar Beach is part of his family's heritage. He comes from a long line of fishermen. People moved to Makassar because of the village known for fishing. We had like all the fish, everything we had, everything going here. But it changed from being a fishing village to being a place of murders and drugs and prostitution. The community blames the increase in crime on the lack of police resources and unplanned power outages. It's become a dangerous place. Just a few weeks ago, a 15-year-old boy was stabbed and Etienne was called to help. Do you know how sad it is when a 15-year-old boy just dies in your arms. There wasn't someone with the experience to help him, and he basically bled to death. Etienne's own son is about the same age as the stabbing victim. My son has this dream where he wants me to drop him by the beach in school holidays where he wants to come fishing alone. And uh, I had the same dream, but in my time it was fine. Today he can't walk from my house to the shop without fearing for his life. The community feels abandoned by authorities. Despite its rich history dating back several centuries, the area is rapidly becoming a soft target for criminals from other areas. 
The Sheikh Yusuf Kramat here in Makassar in the Western Cape is an old Islamic pilgrimage site. This was once a safe and peaceful community for raising a family and those seeking a sense of belonging. But with the recent and grisly discovery of four dumped bodies in the space of a week, all that has changed. Ibrahim Roda is a former teacher who has spent many years researching the history of Islam at the Cape. You are virtually sitting within the cradle where Islam was established at the southern tip of Africa by this great luminary that was buried here in 1699. Sheikh Yusuf was an Islamic scholar and leader, exiled from Indonesia because of his threat to the commercial interests of the Dutch. And that is why this place here, Makassar, very historical, named after the town where Sheikh Yusuf was born. But the town of Makassar is no longer only associated with historical significance. Instead, it has become known as a dumping ground for dead bodies. On the 28th of May, a second body was found here, right here where we are standing. Peter Helfrich is the local ward councillor. He's been having to survive on only four hours of sleep a night due to his efforts to protect his community. People were also very frustrated on that day because just the day before that they found uh, a body on, on Makassa Beach and the person was stabbed with a broken bottleneck in the head and in the neck. Shockingly, only days later, yet another body was found on the 1st of June, also off Makassar Road, hidden amongst bushes. And then, almost unbelievably, a fourth body was discovered. Four bodies found in a week made headlines, but it still hasn't brought the assistance the community desperately needs. The longer the hours of darkness, the higher the probability of criminal incidents. But just how reliable is the power supply to Makassar? Here, electricity is supplied by ESCOM. Peter believes the aging infrastructure is the reason for the frequent and extended power outages, a situation ripe for criminality. In our ward, as soon as load shedding is supposed to end, it does not end. This is when the extended power outages in our ward starts. And this sometimes lasts for days. Now, criminals know this and they take advantage of this. And this is when they come to our ward to come and do crime. And with an under-resourced police service, Makassar residents are easy prey. There is only one police van available most of the times in this ward on one shift. There is only two police officers available to serve the residents. And we are more than 50,000 residents in this ward. Makassar residents turn to their community leaders as a last desperate resort. Unfortunately, people have lost faith in our police service. And that is why they call me first. A kidnapping victim rescued in Delft also had a special report on the escalating crime situation in Makassar. As the shadows lengthen in Makassar, the call to prayer can be heard. For those living here, the setting of the sun does not signify the peaceful end of a long day, but rather the beginning of rising anxiety for what could lie ahead. As dusk descends, anything is possible. And we've been fighting for this for many years. Something these brave locals know too well. All of us standing here is the last line of defense for the residents in this ward. Be very careful. This is a very hostile area, this. Tonight, the Metro Police are accompanying members of the Neighborhood Watch. <laughs> it's load shedding and people disappear into the darkness. We contacted the police about the spike in crime here in Makassar. In an email, the SAPs uh, recognized the unprecedented crime wave and reported the allocation of further resources to addressing the problem. From being associated with the birthplace of Islam in South Africa 
to becoming a dumping ground for the dead. Makassar residents remain afraid of the darkness that cloaks their community, left on their own until authorities hopefully come to their rescue. Since that horrific week not long ago, only one arrest has been made in connection with the first body discovered on Makassar Beach. A male suspect has been charged with the rape and murder of the female victim. Another one of the bodies has been identified as that of a homeless man. The circumstances surrounding his death remain unknown. But for the other two, who they were and how they died remains a mystery. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access Carte Blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.